Hi, and welcome to the videos for section 3.2 for Math 181. This is the first of three videos. Section 3.2 has to do with inverse functions and logarithms. I know, nobody likes logarithms. Unfortunately, we don't have a choice. Uh, it's a big part of calculus. A lot of the different functions we're gonna be dealing with have logarithms. We'll be able to simplify some functions using logarithms. What I would say though about this section is that hopefully it's more review for you than it is new material. Now, I don't say that with the intent to scare you. Like as we start going through some of this and I say, okay, recall this. If you can't just recall it from base memory, that's okay. I mean, that's why we have this section. That's why we're doing these videos. But the point being is that hopefully it's not brand new material that once seeing it, once working some problems, it's like, oh yeah, I vaguely remember that from Math 126. Uh, and that's where a lot of this will be coming from. Math 126, if you've taken math here at UNLV, or uh, CSN even goes by the same name. So our first of our recall information is the following definition. A function is one to one if it never takes the same value twice. So for example, the mathematical way of writing this is f of x1 is not equal to f of x2 if x1 is not equal to x2. So let's think of this as an example. If I have the function um, x squared, if I have x squared, if I plug in positive 2, so f of 2 would be what? It'd be positive 4. Well, what about negative 2? Well, negative 2 squared is also positive 4. So it's taking the same value even though these numbers are not the same. Well, what does x squared look like? It's a parabola, right? So if I'm given a function, if I'm given the graph of a function, how can I quickly determine if something is one to one? It's by the what? It's by the horizontal line test. So if I can draw a horizontal line and I hit that graph more than once, it is not a one-to-one -one function. Second, domain and range for inverse functions. So, this is pretty important. We're going to use this a lot the rest of the semester for this class. If I have a function and I have a domain and range for that function, if that function has an inverse function, what do I know about the domain and range and the relationship between the two? Well, they switch, right? So if I have a function that has domain of A, that's the range of the inverse function and vice versa. So how we would write that is that the domain of f inverse of x, so this negative 1 means it's the inverse function of x. So the domain of the inverse function is just the range of the original function. And the range of the inverse function is the domain of the original. 
So again, hopefully this isn't new information to you. It's just, not, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, I remember. Uh, even in Math 127, when we were talking about like the sine inverse function, cosine inverse function, it had this relationship. Third, to find the inverse, of a one-to-one -one function we have the following steps first we're gonna write so instead of writing f of x is equal to something we write y is equal to whatever that function might be b or step two we're gonna solve for x so this equation is gonna have some uh, some variables. So maybe y is equal to x squared minus 3. So once we have that, we solve for x. We get x by itself. And then once we do that, we interchange our x and y's. Now, you may have learned this in a little different order. Some people they write the equation, then they change the x and y's, then they solve for y. That's fine, you'll still get the same answer. So again, with math, there's not always a one and only hard, fast way to do things. This is one of those situations. You can write the equation, change the variables, then solve for y you would be changing for at that point. All right, a theorem we have. First one of this section, although it's labeled Theorem 6, so I'll stick with the same name. If f is a 1 to 1 continuous function, defined on an interval, then f inverse is also continuous. And theorem seven says that if f is a one-to-one -one differentiable function, we can take the derivative, with inverse f, f inverse and if f inverse of f prime of a is not equal to zero, then the inverse function is differentiable at A And F inverse prime of A is equal to 1 over F prime of F inverse of A. Uh, so this one here. Sorry, up here, this is f prime of f inverse of a, because that's what ends up in our denominator. That's why it can't be zero. So if f is a one-to-one -one differentiable function with inverse f inverse and f prime of f inverse of a is not zero, then the inverse function is differentiable at a 
and its derivative at a is just equal to the derivative of the original function and we plug in the value that we get uh, when we plug in a into that inverse function. We'll see an example in a little bit of this, but uh, for now if you just want to get it written down and then we'll apply it in a little bit. So that's actually the end of video one. Uh, a couple of recall items in terms of our inverse functions, our two new pieces in terms of the calculus, uh, continuous and then uh, derivatives. So come on back, uh, we'll look at some more recall information, we'll get a little bit into our logs and what everybody hates, I know the law of logs and how we can apply those and then we'll look at some examples.